the poor in spirit, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? The Gospel of the Lord. My friends, I think I was either in my uh, late 20s or early 30s where I um, made the transition from uh, being able to see without glasses to uh, needing glasses. I think all of us uh, may remember, or many of us may remember, that uh, first moment where we thought, you know, maybe there's something wrong with my eyes. Yeah, having said that, we also, uh, I think, tend to just uh, adjust to the way we're seeing things and uh, to the vision that we have and uh, to the uh, uh, condition of the eyesight. When I uh, thought that, before I thought it it might be my eyes, I thought that maybe I was seeing poorly just because it was part of getting old getting old at the, into the late 20s or early 30s. <clears throat> so I did go to the doctor, of course, and had my eyes tested. And uh, sure enough, I uh, needed glasses. And I distinctly uh, remember him uh, putting the glasses on my uh, face, on my eyes, and making a little adjustment. And then he uttered the words, he says, now you will be able to enjoy life better. And uh, ever since then, <clears throat> along with so many other people, I need glasses. I don't have them on now because uh, I can manage everything at this site, uh, but uh, God forbid I drive a car without my glasses. I predominantly need them for distance. In today's gospel passage, Jesus, of course, as he refers to eyes and the eyesight, of an individual, he of course is not speaking so much about physical sight, but a type of vision that we need to have in order to um, perhaps uh, live happier and better lives. As the doctor said, now you will enjoy life better. I think our Lord also imparts the same kind of wish to us. If we have correct vision, not murky vision, but correct vision, then living the Christian life becomes something not only simply possible, but living the Christian life becomes something happy, something that gives us joy and meaning and purpose in life. Being out of focus is a very uncomfortable 
uh, situation for us if we, even if we're watching television or if we're observing something and the picture is not clear. We need to be able to see things clearly. And there's always a sharp contrast, if we listen to the scriptures of the day, between the poor vision that the world offers us, that sometimes, if truth be told, tempts us successfully, and of course, the vision that Christ himself offers each one of us. The uh, poor vision of the world sometimes helps us to see clearly what is before us, what is immediate, what is now, what perhaps may be for our own personal gratification now. But the better vision, of course, is to be able to see the greater things, such as the kingdom of God that we are part of, the kingdom of God that we are meant to uh, promote in this world, and also the unity with Christ that we are meant to have. And let us also keep in mind that correcting our vision, correcting our vision is something that we do often in life. Every few years, we've got to get our eyes tested so that we may continue to see clearly. Let us pray that God may give us all the strength and courage we need to truly see life as Jesus puts it before us. Join with me now as we offer our prayers and our petitions to our Father in heaven. Let us pray for the Holy Father and for those who share the privilege and the burden of leadership in our church. For this we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the leaders of our world, especially those who will gather here in Canada, in Toronto in a few days. May they have the proper vision to see clearly the needs of all humanity. For them we pray to the Lord. For those of you at home who have called in or written in with your petitions and your personal intentions, may the Lord hear you and embrace you in his love. For you we pray to the Lord. And for our beloved dead and those who mourn them, we pray to the Lord. Father, hear the prayers of your people expressed in our deep faith. Answer them in your love, and we ask this of you through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Amen. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sins. And pray now, my friends, that this hour's sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 